Happy Friday everyone! Thank you Charlotte for that, that's just cheered me right up. I don't know if you saw Charlotte's comment but she put happy Friday everyone and some flowers. So I thought I'd jump on that one too and wish everyone a happy Friday. I hope everybody is well, lovely to see you all. Welcome back to the live studio here in Wakefield. My name is Tony Dara and this is a great studio where you can come and get some inspiration with your paint, pens, pencils, all the good stuff that I talk about all the time. So if you are brand new to the studio though, do not forget to click that subscribe button that tells you when we are live and the little bell tells you half an hour before we are live just in case you're wanting to grab a cup of tea and if you have got a little HD button that will give you a better viewing experience. So come and join the family, come and say hi. One lady is just saying she can't keep up, now you know why my vertigo is really bad because I just cannot keep up, I'm like this. So I've jumped out of my packing pants and I've jumped into my creative pants in relation to everybody's orders we've got about 80 to do so we're nearly there out of about 2800 orders we've got about 80 to do i spent most of my day today on the telephone i spoke to some lovely ladies so thank you so much for being patient everyone we really really do appreciate it. we wouldn't be in this position if it wasn't for you at home so thanks for your patience although i do have to say please do not email or call us in an aggressive manner or nasty emails or be unkind to the staff. If you have any issues whatsoever, please ask to speak to me personally and I will speak to you myself. I don't want anybody getting upset. I don't want my staff upset because people have emailed saying, why is it taking so long? Why is it taking so long? Why are you cancelling my order? Please be kind. But if you have issues and you do want to speak to me personally and you do ring in and get Becky or Jade, please ask for me and I will speak to you personally. But overall, it's been such a positive event and thank you so much. We will be doing more, but we will fix the problems that we've had this time with relation to our website and double ordering and cancelling orders and things like that. We will have a new website by the time we do it again. So don't lose hope. Keep the faith. We have 80 more to get through. I'm working the weekend as well and I will be calling a lot of customers as well to speak to them about their orders. So thank you so, so much, everyone. Yeah, everyone, it's okay. It's, it's not me wanting to tell anybody off because the people that are being patient are the people that follow stamps by me. But unfortunately, we did, we did have um, customers on who jumped on for the clearance who've never bought from us before and obviously don't know the family ethos here at Stamps By Me and how we actually work. Um, I'm not naming any names because that would be completely unprofessional, but you know who you are. So, you know, just keep it kind if we can. Um, and I'm here to help if needed. Um, and going on to that as well, I don't know if anybody, I don't know if anybody knows Barbara Gray, but you all know Barbara Gray probably. I check out her blog. She did a sale. She had issues. But um, Barbara Gray was quite vocal about what happened. So go and check it out, everyone. Um, I should really put that on my page. But, you know, I'm over it. We've got 80 orders to do. And I'm hoping that everybody's nearly got all of their goodies. So let's get it get it sorted and move on should we say but i am positive i really am positive and i know that a lot of you have got some fantastic goodies from that sale who are having great pleasure and time crafting with them so that fills me with joy anyway regardless so let's say hi to our lovely friends so let's have a look hi deborah hi marilyn marilyn saying please be kind it's one of my all-time favorite sayings be kind you know you don't know what somebody's going through we don't you know you got to be kind um, hi mate, Jill, Rosie, Enid, Sue, Lindsay, Lindsay I'll be giving you a call, Joan, Margaret, Karen, Elaine, Corinne, Amanda, Wendy, thank you, have we all got a cup of tea? I've got a herb tea today, different hey? Yeah, we, it, yeah. let's move on because I don't really want to play on with it, it's done and we're nearly to the end of it. So um, today. I have um, a winner from the this lovely subscription box. Here we are, look. I'll just move this guillotine out of the way because it looks scruffy. It will play with my anxiety, will that one? So I have the lovely subscription box, which I said I would do a giveaway for. So we've got a name for this one. So stay tuned to the end for that one, which is super exciting because I do like to do little giveaways. And in today's studio, we're going to use the lovely one that we've got on special 
um, normally when we put our um, deal of the day on, whether it be Thirsty Brush, Pretty Penny or Imala, they all sell out before I get in studio, so I never get the opportunity to have a play. Whereas with this one, um, we have a few left, which is brilliant. And it's one of my all time favourites. It's a well loved one, you can see. I've used it quite often and I've done um, lots of techniques to using this one. So if you buy the stamp and die combo, it's normally about £30, but we're giving you the die for free. So it's 15 no, it's not 15 I'm being told off, it's £10. £10. Pound. I know a lot of you have bought it already or might have it already so you'll be able to tune in. If you don't have the stamp, don't worry about it. You might have something in your stash that you can recreate this sort of look. Now we're going to go a bit freehand today, a bit wild with this sort of lavender um, design on here. It comes with the coordinating die as well. So let's get straight into our first demo and I'm, we're going to be quite arty painty on our first demo. So I have a piece of watercolour card here just cut to size and what we're going to do is we're going to create a field. Now I did do um, this sort of um, design and effect with some of my earlier designs a couple of years ago and I think those videos have got most um, views on them. People really like them. So we're going to revisit it today. I know we've got a lot of customers on. And again, it's encouragement to step out of that box and maybe make, make it look like you haven't used a stamp and create a backdrop as well. So that's quite fun. So I want to see you all playing this afternoon with some pictures on the Eureka fan page. Tony is going wild. This is about as wild as it gets. <laughs> I'm so boring. Oh, I tell you. Right, so I've got some tape on my leg, um, you know, just to get rid of the... Um, the pure stick, I don't want it to tear my card and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop my card down here and I'm just going to pop the tape in place, just holding it. So I just have a little border around, nothing too much, but I've got them all on my leg here so I'm just going to pin it down. Now if you haven't got low tack tape, uh, masking tape will do, but just make sure you do the good old on the leg, because even despite the best ones in the world they always tear well mine do anyway so I'll just pop this on here I'm just creating a pretty border around this watercolor piece here then we're going to have a little bit of fun so what's the weather like where everybody is is everybody okay first of all shall we check in you go girl yeah herb tea for me early night <laughs> as wild as it gets, eh? <laughs> oh, uh, oh no, who's on the naughty step? Oh my gosh, I'm not getting involved. I don't want any husbands ringing me, I've taken enough phone calls today, I don't need anybody else ringing me about <laughs> wives and partners ordering things, don't get me in trouble. Could you imagine? Right, what we're going to do is, I've got all sorts going on here, so undecided me i have my distress inks you know just the water-based inks and i've also grabbed my basket of watercolor pens which has also got some alcohol markers in there as well so i'm gonna go a bit rogue today i don't think there's any harm in playing it's a piece of card if it doesn't work we move on don't we but it's the fun and the process of um doing these sorts of cards and i think if you get to grips with it you will make more than one and absolutely enjoy them. So um, just a quick update then. Do you know when I said about the Saturday, um, March is the month of craft, okay, national craft, which means to get people back into craft, get new people to craft, try a different genre and all that sort of stuff. So I'm painting every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock every Saturday in March. And I'm going to be, po next week I'll post the picture of the things that, the picture we're going to do and what you'll need you don't have to go out and probably buy things. You probably have them in your stash like a size 4 brush. It doesn't have to really be a 4. It can be a 3 or a 6 or something. A flat brush, um, some watercolours and a bit of watercolour card. And then we'll spend an hour and a half together. It'll be like a coffee morning and we'll be able to put the overhead on and we'll sit and talk about what we're doing. And then we can all post our finished makes over on the Eureka fan page throughout the month of March. And then hopefully, you know, it's been one, a little bit of a distraction. And two, you've actually felt the enjoyment of doing some free hand work because it can be really, really rewarding if you just give it that chance. So I want as many people to get um, involved as possible. So let's get, I'm just getting my watercolour pens here. So I've got a variation of greens 
and we need some purples. Did I get purple? Oh, I've got a whole, whole set of purples and pinks. Let's go purples and pinks. Um, should pop a bit of yellow maybe. So let's just go with what we've got here for now. I've also got my distress inks in case we need to sort of make it better. So let's create. When I do sort of like a field of pop, I think the video was actually a field of poppies. This time it's going to be a field of lavender. Grey and damp in Sussex, windy and cold in Worcestershire. <laughs> I can't say that. Oh, it's a good job I don't drink. Um, can't wait. Everybody's excited about that. That's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I've got a flat brush here. Now you're going to need a flat brush for when we do our um, painting in March. One of these. Just an inexpensive one. Nothing fancy. Um, it doesn't really matter, but try and if you can get a wider one, that would be better. Uh, uh, th this is about half an inch, I would say. So something like this. This is just one from the range or something like that. Nothing fancy. So let's get some water. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to create a backdrop on my card. So basically, when you put a backdrop on your cards, it sort of stops your artwork from floating around. You know, like it's just there. We need to create a bit of atmosphere in the background, but it's just very easy and very pleasing on the eye, so it doesn't look like your work's floating around. So I've got my spray bottle here, which is leaking. I don't know how, I must have cracked it or something. So I'm just going to spray the card here, just get it wet. Now, what will happen is, best artists in the world, you always get a bleed which goes under your tape. Don't worry about it, we can cut it down. So I'm just going to move that water around on that watercolour card. So I've got a wet, sort of wet piece of card. Now, if you're wondering, is it wet? If you bob down when you look at your artwork, if it's shiny, you know it's wet. Okay, so there we go. So let's get some, like, sunshine maybe in the background or something in the distance. It doesn't matter what colour. So I'm just going to use um, an orangey yellow watercolour gossip pen here. Just going to pick it with my brush and I'm just going to pop it into the background here. So just pouncing with my brush, nothing fancy, just get that colour down. I'm just going to do it all over, just for ease. So just get that detail in there. Now I just want to go a bit darker, just add a bit more. Add some darker spots in areas and go for it. Remember, it always dries back way, way lighter. Anyway. So because I'm doing a bit of a lavender field, I'm going to pop some purple in the back as well. So I'll just clean this off. Now, if you don't have pens, like I say, your little ink pads will work. Um, you know, any water-based things will work, really. And just drop a bit of purple in here as well. Now, my field is going to be like blowing in the wind, so I'm going to keep it in sort of theme and just drop some purples in the background here. Get some more. Like so. And these are super quick cards which really look like, you know, you have sketched the design. It's cool. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'll just clean off this block. So whilst it's wet, I'm going to take the stamp and I'm going to do the big one. And I'm just going to pop it on my block here. Now my block is not quite big enough, but I'm okay with it. And I'm going to take that colour that we've just used in that background and I'm just going to brush it onto the lavender area by the side of my pen here and I'm going to take a green and just use it, make sure you use the side of your pen and not the nib so my card is still wet hopefully, it's done down, yeah it's still shiny shiny and then what we're going to do is we're going to creep this as if it's coming in from the car like up here so let's and what will happen is because the card is wet it'll give us a nice pretty bleed 
and we want the bleed because this is not the focus on our card and you see there how it sort of bled into that I'm just going to repeat that process I'm going to change out my green so that's a bit stark I am using watercolour card I get a better result for this sort of technique with watercolour card so dig out what you've got in your stash you see that sort of like bleeding out there so I'm just going to use a different ink and then just pop some like as if it's peeking in at the bottom here so don't worry if it's really dark honestly don't worry so what I'm going to do is that's still a little bit crystal clear for me I want it to be in the background so I'm going to give it a spritz with a bit of water just get it to move a little bit more not much just a little bit you see how it's sort of like disappearing I want it to disappear I don't want it to be sort of um, like a focal point if that makes sense I want it all to blend and bleed so I'm just giving it the time to do its magic <coughs> and then just gonna take let's just grab another let me just grab another acrylic block here if you get a puddle of colour like that, just take some tissue, mop it up, not the end of the world. Just mop it up with a bit of tissue. Just got rid of that little puddle. And then I've just got a green here, and I'm just going to pop some green on my mat here. I'm just going to take a smaller brush. While it's still a bit wet and it's working its magic, these things are best left if you let them dry themselves. They really are. But time is of the essence so I'm just going to add some splats these will pretty much disappear to nothing and then let's dry it off and then we need to do the whole process again with um, no water and colour it dries back lighter is that, is that not what I said? <laughs> did I say darker? So I'll just dry this one off. So I'll just bob down and just see where it's shiny. I've got a big puddle here. So because I've done sort of like the heavy water work, I'm going to take off the tape because I'm done with it really. Just do it gently though, because look, can you see how it's pulled my artwork there? Just be careful with it. I will trim it anyway, but just be careful. And then we can now focus on making it look like a you've got sort of like an abstracty field going on there some people like that result what we're going to do is we're going to just sort of like tidy it up a little bit and make it look more like I'll just dry it off a little bit more because it's still a bit damp That's what I do say, Pat. Yeah, it always drives back lighter, so go for it. Right, so now let's go and add the detail again. So again, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the stamp and I'm just going to take two colours. Shall we go with the bright? In fact, go lighter and you can always add. Let's go this one. So let's add some 
of the lavender to one. Shall we do two different coloured heads? So I'll add this one to this one, see if we get a difference in colour. And then we'll add a different one to the other one. This one looks to be darker. And then let's add some shades of green. So you can spritz this with water, just a little bit, that's what I do. But try it out and see what results you get. I'm just going to, just a little bit, and then all I'm going to do, I'm just going to go in a different spot to where we did our bleed, so that bleed will sort of come through and peek through from the back. So let's go, let's go here. And then what we have is a poppet at the front. Let's do it again. We went the light one, didn't we? And then a green. Let's use this green. So also in this set as well, you get a smaller one as well, which has got smaller heads. And I am going to pop the smaller heads as if they're part of this design in between. And then what we'll do is we'll blend them all together. Oh, so easy. Claire Ambrose, will your, new, will your new website show orders and previous orders? Claire, it will. It will show you everything you need to know. It will show you your tracking number. It will show you when it's um, dispatched. You will be able to go back and view older orders. You will be able to go in and update your um, address, your name send to different all by yourself you won't need to speak to us this is why it's costing a lot of money so you can physically do it yourself and see it all yourself um, i'm super excited about it so i have this one here so let's pop this one just up here look so this one's taller now because i've used watercolor pens i'm able to dra drag that ink out remember you see that there? So I've got a beautiful one there. Now I've got this little space here and we could pop, yeah, let's just go with the big one. But you do have the small one too, look. Can you see the small one? You could have some small ones. So let's just see how it looks with um, the big ones down at the base here. But can you see already how you've sort of stopped your artwork from floating because you've got that sort of bleed and it's still got a little bit of the detail in there too, which is really cool. very nice so what we need to do now is we just sort of like need to tie it all together so i'm just going to get a small brush i'm just going to pop a little bit of water on there yeah carol we get a lot of emails from people saying i forgot what i've ordered can you help me out so yeah you'll be able to see so I'll just get some water here and i'm just gonna drag that color out that i've already put on so say for instance so say for instance this pink one here, I'm just going to pounce with my brush into the area and fill in those spaces. Can we see that there? And I'm even going to go outside the lines as well. So I think it looks more realistic. I'll do the pink ones. What I'll do is it'll reactivate that pink. It'll bleed out. I'm just pouncing with my brush here, nothing fancy. And then with the green, I'm just going to fill in the green where it's allowing me to pull it out, obviously. So when we do our painting freehand, we're going to do some things like this, but without the stamps. Don't let it off, put you off though. 
We're going to do some sunsets with some palm trees and things like that. So I think everybody would like to do a successful um, palm tree. So you're thinking, right, OK, it's messy. We're going to trim that down. It's not the end of the world. But what I want to do now is I want to just add a little bit of texture. So we need to go in with sort of some different colours. So let's just grab our distress inks here and chop it up a little bit. <coughs> so let's just grab some purple. Now I'll just pop some on my mat here. Looks very similar. It looks too much alike as this one. But I'll try. I'll fill in some of those areas. So basically, the stamp is a guide. The guide is there for you to follow and make it your own. Well, let's add a different tone of green in there. So, on. so I'm just filling in some of those open areas. So it's just bringing it together a little bit. You still get that slight detail from the stamp because we only sprayed it a little bit on the second occasion. Can you remember? I would just like to add a bit of yellow into those. Um, flowers as well simply because we have like a sunset in the background so that would sort of reflect a little bit just give you an orange sort of bright color on there so what I'm going to do now is I'm absolutely going to cover it with splats just to show you how it'll bring it all together. I'm just using the purple and again it, you won't see half of it once I have dried it off and cut it down. And I always find artwork looks really messy until it's mounted anyway. So Right, so I'm just going to leave that be for the time being. Just tidy my station here. Let's just dry it off. And this is the great thing about, you know, being a little bit creative with your stamp. You can, people will never know if it's a stamp or if you've freehand painted it. Now, if you're thinking, Matt, I've done it and I think it looks like a hot mess, which I am thinking slightly it looks like a hot mess. It's not the end of the world. Take the stamp. In fact, I'll do it. Take the stamp. Not that one is a bit dark. Where's the pen? 
take the stamp and sort of re-stamp over the top but don't spray it all and it'll just bring back some of that definition for you so let's just add a little bit of pink and maybe a bit of green but again it's a piece of card and this is the art of you know having fun I find that if you can't go back over it so say for instance this one is looking a bit of a hot mess I'm going to try and get that detail back in those heads so if I just can you see now we've got detail perfect look at that so it's sort of like brought it back a little bit so because I like that that much I'm gonna do it on my other one too so it's just brought me back that detail that I lost with the too much of the water not bothered if it don't line up perfectly either you can now see we've got that detail in there I'm chuffed as punch with that one now so let's try that isn't it weird how you're in love you hate it you're in love you hate it Honestly, you don't see the true beauty of a card until it's mounted on a card. <gasps> Jan, what are you doing? <laughs> you surely don't need anything else. You've got lots of our stuff. <laughs> There's not enough hours in the day to play with it all. Right, so let's mount this one. Let me just show you how gorgeous it looks when we take a bit of time to mount it. So I'm just going to trim it down. And I'm going to get rid of that borderline edge because we tore the bottom of our card. I might have a little edge if I can get away with it tiny one to see what it looks like now it's going to have to go because it's not um, sitting very well the tear so I'm getting rid of it all so I'm going to mount this onto some black I'm also going to use glue. Just because it's watercolour card. Pop that back in there. And then let's mount this onto this um, piece of black here. Just with a very small border. And then let's trim it down. That says. Oh my God. So. That wasn't a very good thing to do, was it? So I need to put that border back on there. So we also need a sentiment on here. Before I do that, though, I just need to stick a piece back behind here just simply because I've cut it too short. So I don't know if anybody else has ever done this before, but I'm showing you a trick or what I do. I'll just pop that on there like so. I cut it too short next to the artwork, which looked absolutely silly. Now you'll never know. 
So let's get this onto our card. So what I've decided to do first of all is make it look like a hand painted piece. So I've not got any anything special on here. I'm just going to grab my Eureka before we get it on a card. And in this set then you get lots of lovely sentiments. So you're invited, anniversary wishes, which is nice, save the date. What would I do without you? I'm going to go with that one. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop it in this bottom corner here. Just going to go black. So if you have maybe an area on your card that you're not quite in love with, that's okay. The sentiment is a great way to hide the part that you don't like. Um, And then I'll just mount this straight onto this white hot folded note card here. And you could sparkle it up with a little bit of sparkle as well. Um, I'm just going to do it high up and then I'll take the drop off the bottom. So I'll just grab my guillotine here and I'll take that little edge off the bottom there. Just seeing if I have, and uh, today we're going to use my sparkle pen rather than chunky glitter just and be careful because it will reactivate the watercolour but I'm just going to add some sparkle into that lavender then when I hold the card up you might be able to see so not don't over egg it but you can be quite nice with the sparkle so there we go so that's one very simple card which you could batch do Tape three down at once, like a freehand one there. I'll not touch it. There we go. So you would actually get away with maybe saying that is a freehand. And you could do it creeping right up and around the top if you wanted to, but create a really lovely field. But do you see how the background where we did those sort of flashes of purple and that yellow, it's just giving balance to the card. It makes it look like there's lavender further and beyond the actual stamp we did. So very, very simple. I do encourage you to have a go at that one, even if you are an avid stamper. Or let me just show you the sparkle, because if you have got your sparkle pens. There you go. If you have got a sparkle pen, you can add that lovely sparkle too. Thank you. So let's move on to our next card, because I've got two today, believe it or not. I've been on the phone all day. My mouth is really dry. <laughs> can't wait to try it. Oh, I can't wait to see um, what you're going to do, guys. So what I've done, I have done a little bit of work ahead of time to cut a little corner. So what I've done already is I, because you get the lovely die, I've um, stamped them and die cut them already. So you have the small one and the big one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly add some colour. Now, does this flower look like anything else? Can somebody tell me if this flower looks like anything else other than lavender? What colour should we go? Is there another flower that could be, it could be interpreted as? Because if so, I'm going to go with it. I'll just paint the green whilst we decide. Let's just get some green on here, look, on my acrylic block here. So I'm just going to pick up some of this green. I'm just going to pop some green 
on these leaves while I'm told what colour we could do as an alternative on this flower just to chop the design up. What colour is a delphinium, basic please? Yep, have a go. Just It's a piece of card, isn't it? Tape it down if you don't like it, put it in bin. Oh, look, white and pink. Oh, crikey, you are testing me now, Tracy. Right, just whilst I'm going to paint these leaves very, very quickly, I'm just going to pop a little bit of yellow in the backdrop just to stop the open, open white space at the back so it doesn't look like my pieces are going to be floating because I've already prepped a pretty card. So I've just taken this yellow here and I'm just going to pop a little yellow wash in between just to stop my artwork from floating around on my card. So shall we go pink then? You can't really see that on t it's actually quite bright that, but you can't really see it. I'm sure you can on your TVs at home. Oh, Tracy said blue. Right, okay, blue, pink. Ooh, ooh. Shall we let's go blue. In fact, let's go two shades of blue. So I've got here Mermaid Lagoon Evergreen Bow Bow. I don't know. So I'm gonna go this one first. Let's drop a bit of this in first. So again, I don't follow the lines. I'm absolutely really random with it, just simply because I don't think painters and watercolour painters are really, you know, precise. Unless you are like a fine art student who does precise. I do with it being a little bit darker so you can all see, hey? Let's go a bit darker. So again, I'm just pouncing. I'm not getting in, if you, if you don't um, colour it precisely, what happens is you automatically get white space because I'm pouncing, I'm not trying to get within those lines that Claire's drawn, I'm just trying to get it in there. So I'm going to do this blue as well. I'm just going to do this a bit random. And I'm going to take the colour all the way to the white edge. In there. Making it a bit darker just because it doesn't look like it's showing you very well. There we have two blue ones now I am gonna dry these off very quickly I'm just looking for my um, I'll use stick hold I was going to use some glitter, but I'm going to use stickles. So I'm just, I'll do that last actually, because it can get quite messy. So ahead of time, I have, I have my card blank here, a black one. Okay. Black top folding note card. Then I have some like um, mirror board. And then on this one, we are just going to add, just tie it all together. I'm just going to grab um, metallic ink. I'll just get this activated. And get my paintbrush. So I'm going to add a backdrop for my lavender or the philiania. <laughs> what, what did you say? What's it called? The philiania. <laughs> I'm just going to add some 
little gold splats for the back here. Now you've probably not got to see half. I've already, sorry, I haven't told you, have I? Anniversary Wishes. This is one of the stamps from the same set, which I've just done in gold embossing. What I'm going to do is, whilst I've got that lovely gold, I'm just going to add a bit of gold to my um, leaves on here too. Not much. Just a little bit. It's sparkly, isn't it? We all like a bit of sparkle. And then this one. <laughs> so let's just dry these. So let's stick this one onto our card blank. I'll just use tape. So has anybody got anything planned nice for the weekend? I know we're still in a little bit of limbo. Um, anything? You know, going for a walk? Do you know what? It's going to be a right shock when somebody says they're going to a party, and everybody's going to be like, "What party? What's all, What's that?" So then I have our two pieces here: box gloves. Hmm? So we have our two pieces here. But look what happens because we've got the large and the small. We have freedom to play. So the plan was, I'm going to snip into one. Where is my scissors? And I'm going to do it as if we've bound them together with twine, like it's a bunch. Like so. I want, I've chopped them because I want them at different heights like so, can we see that there? So I've created my own like cluster together and then I've just grabbed some twine here. I don't think these things through, you know, I promise. He says. Hmm. So I'm just going to build my embellishment first. So I'm just going to take the two parts that we cut and I'm just going to grab some pads. And I'm going to think about where I'm going to pop these. So I'm going to pop that one straight in the centre, I think. I'm going to need some smaller pads here. So I'm just going to pop one in the centre there. I'm just going to probably bring it down and twist it a little bit. So I've got the 3D baby one there, if that makes sense. And then this one I'm just going to bring further down. Pop a pad on that one. So I've sort of like created myself a little bit of a bunch there. Can we see that there? Now you could do more, do some coming through if you wanted to, but I'm just going to go with that for today. And then I just got some twine. I'm just going to pop some tape to the back. Let's wrap some twine around. Let's see how it's going to look from the front. So we wrap it around. Let's go this bit here. Stick it to that tape. And then we'll wrap it round as if we've gone and picked it out of the garden. Just pop some tape on top just to keep it in place. And then with this piece here, I will try and 
thread it through if it'll allow me to. Oh, it has. It's working out for me today, look at that. And I'm gonna do a nice little bow at the side so it looks like we've got a bow on our collection of lavender or whatever that word is. We'll put the bow to the side. That looks good, that lovely collection down there. Let's twist it round a bit so you can see what's going on. And then with this part here, we'll add it to our card. And then our card here. We have our lovely bunch of lavender here. So we'll just go straight centre. Let's just go straight centre. And let's just add some sparkle to the heads of those. Also add a few spots around on the black because that will look quite cool. We'll leave that as well. Now let's stand them both up so you can see. Wax seal would look great, whoever's idea that was. Wax seal, I'll just move out of the way. There we go. So you can see totally different cards really it depends on your style of craft but it works across the board i think but as always if you don't have the stamp i know you've all been spending lots of money if you don't have the stamp have a look in your stash you might have one of mine that'll work with the same sort of concept as in spraying and creating that field we will be doing a freehand poppy field in march as well which is super super easy and um, so i hope you can join me for that one as well oh brilliant i'll post pictures after as well so give it a try if you're a bit of a loose end today. I'm not sure what everybody's doing this weekend, but I'm certain you've all got something planned, whether it be just a little bit of crafting, um, whatever it may be. Just try and stay connected and, you know, try and not to climb those far walls. It's really, really difficult. But we're getting there, aren't we? So let's have a look. Well done, everybody. So what we'll do is I'll post pictures of these at the end. Oh. Nearly forgot to announce the winner. So the, let me just find the name. I did write it down, I promise you. So the winner of this subscription box is Karen Lone. Karen Lone. Well done, sweetheart. You've won the subscription box. If you didn't buy it, if you did, then you can give it away as a gift in the Eureka fan page. So Karen, if you message me on Facebook or info at stampsbyme.co.uk, we will get this sent out to you. So well done, sweetheart. Well, that's it for me. I'd just like to say have a lovely weekend, but I'll be working. Hopefully on Monday, we will be clear of the clearance and ready to fight to the end of February. So whatever you're doing, stay safe, stay cosy, and I will catch you all on Tuesday. I'm in here on Monday. Take care, everyone. Bye.